Good morning, everybody. Oh, Lonesome's Lonesome's Garage. Working on the Bronco project. He kept building pressure on the upper radiator hose. And uh, had a bunch of vacuum lines out of place, different things like that. And uh, when I got in there to it, I thought maybe it was just a thermostat sticking. It was a new thermostat. And a lot of these things you're supposed to have a little air bleed made in the thermostat on these engines. Some do, some don't. Well, I went to the local Napa, and this one's supposed to have it. You can see there's something missing right there. But uh, thermostat's good. It was a brand new thermostat. Napa didn't have one with the air bleed in it. So here's my fix on that. Drill a hole in it for an air bleed. Put a Carter key in, fold it over. I've done it several, several times. And it works. I get to where I dropped it earlier and I get the spider web off of it. But when I got in there, see these, this hole right here, is a bypass hose. It returns back to the water pump. As you can see, there's something wrong right there. All right, when I got in there to it, this is what I found. You can very well see clearly that there's supposed to be a hose attached there. Somebody had put a bolt in it, packed it, got it packed full of silicone, mounted it back on there. Well, that bypass hose that goes through there and back to there won't let the intake fill up enough to make the thermostat open properly. It traps air. Right here, is where this hose right here is supposed to attach. They had uh, the valve, the whole fitting was gone right there and they had the temp sensor with an adapter screwed into the block there. Well, there was no place for them to hook the other heater hose. So they blocked this they turned back around, stuck the heater hose on top of the water pump along with the other. So you're not going to have any water flow. If you do and you stand on it hard, it's going to bust something. And stop that hole up. Well, I've got, I picked up. the only fitting I could find and I'm going to have to use the adapter on it but they had this adapter and this temp sending unit screwed straight into the top of it but that's as you can see by the adapter that's where right there is where the heater hose return is so uh, now because of that I've got to pull all this off. I'm going to have to pull right down here. I don't know if you can see it, but right down in there is the crossover line for the injector. This one's got the steel lines on it. don't have the braided. If it had the braided, it wouldn't be much of a problem. But it's the solid steel unit that goes across. And you 
you can't push it out of the way. So now I've got to pull the upper planium, all the vacuum lines that I just got done fixing. And then I've got to uh, pull the fuel rail so I can get the proper fitting in. Uh, still waiting on parts for the 90. Part of them will be here today, and I think part of them will be here the 23rd. The green valve set will be here the 23rd. Uh, I'm waiting on parts for one of the earth rammers or the wacky packers, everybody generally calls them. I'm waiting on the fuel shut off cockpit for it. And then uh, the carburetor o ring. But right now at hand, this is well, I gotta get this functioning ready while well, I'm at it. I'll give you a, lot, a little bit of a walk around. He does have the emblem for it. He's got them all for you to clean it. As you can see, pretty sharp old ride. He's got the visor over it. The interior, this is a, a 1989. XLT Bronco Lariat Edition and uh, don't ask me why it don't have Lariat on the dash but all in all for 89 interior is pretty great not too sure about the Cobra head uh, pull buttons Got the chrome steps and stuff. Still got the tire cover, and there's this paint on this thing's factory. And you don't find many factory ones with paint like this on them no more, especially from that year model. Like I said, the engine was a new engine, the guy that was putting it together, I don't know. He just didn't understand that that bypass hose has to be on there or something. But uh, anyway, long story short, we're getting there. We got some other little issues to take care of, and then she'll be roadworthy, road ready. I got to do the air conditioner on it. And. I had to refill the air, pull the vacuum, refill the air conditioner, and check the air out on it, make sure all that's good. Because he had all that off when he pulled the engine. Uh, another issue I have is the O2 sensors aren't hooked up. They've got new exhaust pipes and stuff on it. see them it crosses over under there but they put new exhaust on it and they didn't weld the bung in for the O2 sensor so it's running a little rich on startup and stuff but that can be remedied and get the wire harness extension hook it all up and put it all put the two O2 sensors back in place on this one out of the exhaust system, get it back functioning. And let's see, I got an exhaust leak under there I gotta fix, and I got a transmission leak. Uh, the gentleman put a new front pump seal in it, but when he put the torque converter back in, I think he nipped the seal. But just a little update on what Lonesome's to doing today. empty shop waiting on the welder to come in and finish what he was doing on the dirt the shoulder machine and if it was me I'd just 
put the wings on it and bolt them in that way it wouldn't be disturbing anything and that's my update for the day guys this one over has thing does have the 58 engine in it which is a good thing but that's the update on what the lonesome's doing today y'all have a good day now you hear Stay well, watch your backs, because there's always somebody out there. Later, guys.